Welcome back to Age of Bison. We've got another 1v1 tournament game from Pete and Iwa. And today we've got a match on Alaska. We've got we've seen a fair few really good matches on this map, and uh, it, it's it's been an, uh, a theater of great fights. Um, today I'm joined again by my favorite Hasa player, as I said last time, uh, and this is Jacob. And uh, you don't need to present yourself anymore, although. Uh, maybe you might do it as well because this is game three, so I might actually upload it first. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm happy to be here on stream and it's going to be really exciting to cast this game with you and uh, it's going to be nice to see some house action. Yeah, I agree. Um, like, uh, maybe maybe for the for the listeners, we, we're both house and mains. Or I, I don't, you know, I, I kind of switched Civ a little bit, but I, I still... Uh, you know, I, I, I've, I've got a, a link with the Civ, let's, let's put it that way. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And I also really enjoy playing House, just such a versatile Civ. And I, I do make a lot of YouTube content revolving around different House strategies. So if you're interested in House, uh, yeah, you, you know where to find it. But I think it's just going to be interesting because, as I said, there's such a diverse Civ. So there's really a lot of stuff you can do, uh, and especially against the Brits, right? Um, because Brits kind of take a while to get started, so I think that can definitely fall in House's favor if they decide to go for some early aggression, or what do you think? Yeah, uh, I, I agree. I do think Brits can be a little bit tough in the long run, uh, but if you if you manage to do some good damage early on, it's okay. Yeah, I think Raider start versus Brits is always a good call because well, if you manage to pick off some villagers, and even if he builds a four road Drax, you can just be annoying back at his base and just trying to idle him while you take care of his musketeers. So, but we'll see what Pistol Pete does here. Well, we've seen a lot of um, Nutka, ga Nutka gameplay on this map, and uh, I, I feel, feel I, I don't know, I, I kind of have a feeling that we might see it again. Nutka are really good against Hausa, I think. Yeah. Yeah, that's actually true, but completely unviable if you are house, of course, because they cost influence, and yeah. you're not gonna have that much influence in, in the early ages. I, I've done a, a thing once where um, I, I would just go H2, ship 700 influence, and train a, a bunch of natives, and like kind of rush with that. It, 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 it's possible, but like, uh, you don't really see it. I mean, yeah. you know, I think a nice wood treasure here, wood treasures are always nice for. Almost any Civ. Yeah, it's, and also picking honestly, up that native unit there. The yeah, that's really that, that's actually huge. I, honestly, I'm with Hausa. I'm not all that sold on wood treasures because you you just get the wood from your cows and it's kind of a fixed macro, so you don't like you can't you don't really have a good way of spending the extra wood. Uh, yeah. I'd rather have XP, but uh, that's or food to age up faster. So that that's my opinion. But uh, wood, wood is you know it's still nice to deny Brits. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, what the wood the... for Britain is just huge. Okay. Let's, let's actually check the deck. So um, we've got a water deck, a 100% water deck for um, Pete. Yeah. Although I say 100%, but it doesn't have fish market or rendering plan. So it, yeah, it... and it also has spice trade, actually. So, so yes. really interesting. If he does decide to go for boats, interesting. I don't see when you would set the spice trade in that case, because you would get all the food from the boat. But there it is, uh, nonetheless. So he has a lot of options, actually. Yeah, and um, uh, yeah, let's actually quickly switch over to Ewo, and we've got uh, this deck here, so a bit of a explorer fight here. Uh, ooh, that's not going to go well for Mr. Cunningham. So oh yeah, yeah, that's a very nice pickup for Ewo there. Getting that 45 XP is just really huge this early. And that is really interesting, that uh, card uh, in H1 uh, in in H1 H1. there. Right, I was going to point that out. This is a train, yeah. uh, a train time card. So it's, a, I think it's a. How does it have a, an all all unit train time card in H3? But it's like ten percent. So I think this is actually a more yeah, interesting it's, one. Yeah, it's not. Really, I think it's fifteen. But but yeah, it's it's not great. But I don't know. That's really a card you you don't see. Though. Don't really see a lot. I, yeah. yeah, it's it's a very unusual card. I I doubt he will actually send it. Yeah, it's um, a late game thing. But it, it, I do think it's a better train time card than the other one. And also, it's an H1, yeah. so it's easier to fit in. He does have the and also, gunboat. Yeah, exactly. And also the cannon boat is really interesting. And also both the Sudanese allies' shipments, which uh, is quite interesting as well. Don't really feel uh, like you yeah. see those too often these days. Yeah, that's... that's... Oh, look, just denying this manner here with... <laughs> oh, 
<laughs> with the clubman, yeah. Oh yeah, that's really nice. Do we see? Uh, does uh, Pistol Pete have a Virginia company, or did he just go no, for the? What did he send? Oh, what? Oh, is that <laughs> have you ever seen that? Card? That's interesting. Okay, this is interesting. Yeah. So I guess he wants it to buff his barracks, or what is he gonna do with it? Because I I, I guess it doesn't buff the. Oh, I know. Training camp. He's gonna put a dock a dock right here, and it's. Does it affect the... Oh, right. Does it actually affect the... Wait. That's a, that's a does really it affect the TC? Actually. It's actually lagging a bit now, so I can't really hear you, but... Huh. But yeah, I guess it does affect boats, right? Probably does. The question is, does it affect the TC? Yeah, I don't know. That's a good question. It would be interesting to uh, to uh, check that actually, but I guess we can't really see it now. It doesn't look like it. They train faster than the um, than the British. Yeah. It probably does affect the boats. I don't know. It's, uh, okay, let's get back to British. Yeah, the boats are training incredibly fast. Do you see that? Like, surely that is way faster than they normally train, right? No. Uh, yeah, look at that. See. Compared to the villagers, it feels really quick, actually. I, I mean, this is a, such a smart idea. Though. It's really and oh, and look, he's got a griot on it too. Oh, maybe that's why. Oh yeah, yeah. I think the griot actually buffs. It. It's like I think it's fifteen percent. So oh, yeah, it's actually. There's nice. just but one thing I don't like. The question is though, this warrior should have been here. Yeah, yeah, getting the buff on that one as well would be huge. And yeah. also, like, it looks good, but. To be honest, is it better than just sending 700 wood and just building two docks? I don't know. Yeah, that's a good question. I mean, he, he could, you can send it a bit earlier, so he, he actually sends it in that transition. He's yeah, I guess that's true. And also, like, good. one good thing about that is, I guess, you have that card for the rest of the game. So, like, if it goes into the late game, it could actually be quite useful to just have barracks that are buffed in training speed, I guess. We do see starting Javelin Riders here, which is an interesting decision. I wouldn't really decide to uh, uh, go Javelins against Brits this early, because you don't really expect Hussars this early. Uh, mm. Brits tend to just go Mat, Pike, and uh, and uh, both, of course. Yeah, he, he, did, uh, he didn't actually go Mat, Pike. He, did, he went Longbow Pike for now. Um, yeah. Oh, oh, there we go. A Schooner is coming in now. Okay, so I guess we're gonna see uh, Pistol Pete going out on the water as well. So I guess he sends uh, 700 wood and then 600 wood. Actually, he cancelled the shipment, Ship, so yeah. he's gonna go for uh, 700 co uh, coin now. An interesting call. So we don't see any nudes cut this time, by the way. <laughs> I just, well, I was wondering. Not gonna lie. This is a lot of Fulani. It go bad for Brits. If he, if, see, but right now he is training double batch of. Longbow, yeah, I think it's fine though with the TC no fire and that protective. Uh, yeah, there's really not any siege from Hausa here, so he can't really do do anything. Oh, and yeah. the villagers probably have the great boats already, so they're gonna be really uh, tanky for the boats to take down, right? Okay, he doesn't actually. So that's but, quite bold move, not going to uh, great boats. Although they're, they're still kind of behind the army, but like the the researchers are still safe. So it's and and yeah. longbow do just trade pretty well. They got twice the damage and more. Yeah. Damage. And I think the damage. problem here is like, for for if, if like considering if we was build here, going for that dock, I, I don't think it's gonna achieve too much because Brits is probably just gonna boom faster than him anyway. So he'll yeah. probably just lose out in the long run, and he's lost a lot of like tempo not having raiders in the, in Pistol Pit space. So I think this is actually playing into Pistol Pit's hand. I wonder it could be. Uh, oh. So what do we have? 29 villagers for Hausa. How many for Pistol Pete? It's 39. 39, Spice yeah. Coming in too. So yeah, you're oh, probably yeah. right about that. Yeah, it, a like, lot of resources It's a nice Pistol idea, well. but maybe against a different sieve. That's, that's basically the conclusion I think we, we have here. Yeah, I think so Brits are just <laughs> too good at booming, yeah. 
And also, uh, I think if you do that build, maybe you need to go even more all in. Just make two docks and then just send like 700 wood, 600 wood, and just spam boats. Yeah, uh, I, think it's not good. I, I like this. Yeah. You're just <laughs> stuck under, uh, under the dock. <laughs> Uh, yeah, <laughs> I, I really like to play with the griot though. Like, use the yeah. like just, also just, something a lot of people forget is like using the griots to put them on your barracks and put one on your starting TC. It's like 15% uh, faster villager training rate. That's actually really good. Yeah, I did, uh, I the really only annoying thing, is, yeah, the annoying thing though is that it's really easy to accidentally select it and just pop it into the TC or start moving it with your army, but. Yeah, uh, but it is quite useful. I'm guessing he went up with um, with Hausa because he's he's got this wagon here. Yeah, I think so. And <clears> also <throat> a bit of a shame they're getting that uh, he, he's building another war war hut there, but yeah, he's also again. now again missing out on the bonus from the university. Like imagine putting it there next to the university. Train faster. I mean, the question is, does he does he have the resources? It, like the question, the first question is: If if this had been nice next to the university, would he even have needed? It's just a question. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah probably not. But I guess he gets the double barracks just to train two different unit types at a time. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. He's actually <clears throat> training three places right now. Is he training for the party boat as well? Does he have a party boat? I think he has one. Where? I think he built one, but I'm not sure what it is actually. It's actually uh... on the opposing. Co yeah, take a look at that. Oh, there he's we go. go. For the and he's training raiders in the back. Yeah, more raiders over here. He really does like those party boats, actually. Yeah. They are like getting getting a galleon in in a. Oh, this is this is a waste. But I suppose he did get a a vill. Yeah, it, I think he got two vills actually. Yeah, if, uh, like two or three. Having a galleon in H two is kind of broken. Fine. <laughs> yeah. Don't know yeah, about the, this. I think I think they are really good in H two. Exactly. The <clears throat> the problem for Hausa is just that once they go H three, it's really difficult to get that uh, frigate type ship out. Uh, I don't remember what it's called, but it's like seven hundred yeah. influence, and you're not gonna have seven on. Yeah, the Sebek. Yeah, you're not gonna have like seven hundred influence just laying around. Oh, uh, these full on here, anyways. And and Rich just aged up with uh, with a TC. I wonder whether that's. Oh, we're just it right next to the yeah, base. it looks like he's gonna try to secure the water there. Yeah, and, and the, the yeah. research. And he does have a ship, and also getting the upgrades here for the pike man. So he's gonna probably go just continue making uh, with that uh, pike goon, uh, or sorry, pike bowman composition. And yeah. I think it's gonna work out really well. I like the it. The question is, do you send falconets in this position? I don't, I don't know. I think Hausa needs the falconets right now because the, the range of the longbow is gonna be a massive issue. And yeah, looks like because it. like the problem as as Brits now, if you go uh, for for the two falconets, I think is you lose the mobility of your army, and yeah, that can be quite devastating. And yeah, also, I suppose these are already more anti cavalry yeah. position. Now let's see what does he have. So he's sending ten longbow. It makes sense. For actually, me. maybe like even getting the range upgrade. No, yeah, actually, ten longbow into range. Yeah, maybe. And then That's probably, probably the next card, yeah. Honestly, even age up and get problems. But, like, I don't yeah. know whether there's the opportunity. Also, like, imagine he has so many villagers. Oh, look at this, though. Spice, spice trade. The villager count is actually closing in. Okay, yeah, interesting. Okay, so I guess we see a lot of boats here from, from Evo Evo, so catching up with the boats, actually. Yeah, I can't quite see. Oh, wait. Looks but like, like imagine, yeah. imagine here in Pistol Pete's uh, position, like he has a lot of villagers. He has spice trade in. Imagine going for uh, uh, the refrigeration as well. Like imagine that food gather rate would be just insane with the, the two time, the two twenty percent upgrades. Yeah, look at this. Um, I, I love, I love the pike. Uh, yeah, that just, pike skin is just awesome. Yeah, you yeah, don't, you really don't see, see it that lot. much, but this is just amazing. Oh, these trees yeah. are. I think this composition actually is probably pretty good versus Hausa because Hausa always struggles to get yeah. cannons out. Like, if they haven't planned to go for a strategy that involves cannons, then it's going to be really rough to get them out. Yeah, and the, the only unit they have against this is Fulani, but Longbow kind of wrecked those in, in, in equal numbers. 
yeah and also i think yeah yeah exactly and, and you kind of need to take a really good trade with hausa because uh well brit's eco is just gonna be way better so <laughs> it's really difficult i think oh with, with if you've managed to get the bikes up. you're fine and, and but it's, it's gonna be hard and uh uh Ivo just aged up so he's, he's actually in a gonna be in a little bit of he's, he shipped yeah, he could, he could actually go for the imported cannons now, I guess. Yeah, and see, he does have a shipment stack. His barracks have been here. Oh. What's that? Yeah. I want to see what does he have. Well, he's shipping Fulanis. Yeah, uh, I think you want to send a thousand influence in this yeah. position. Try to pray to God to get those two Falconets out, but yeah. it's going to be really rough. It looks like Pete sent the SARS. No, he didn't. He actually trained. So he's got a stable now. And he shipped the longer range. It makes a lot of sense. Yeah. yeah. It's gonna be tough. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's just looking really scary. The mass from Britzer is just huge. And we see all of the cattle is all actually already oh, yeah. uh, sent there. So, or was yeah, it evacuated? They... <laughs> I no, I don't see them. Yeah, there. maybe it was. Maybe, maybe it was sent. Maybe or maybe just the... sold everything. Yeah. Yeah, it but looks like it. Yeah, yeah that definitely can affect his economy a bit. Yeah. The, the Fulani shipment is also kind of awkward. Yeah. And I think that's the problem. Like, if you can't get enough mass there to contest those bowmen with your own Fulani, then it's much better to just go for the cannons. But he's trying to get the the range upgrade, which makes a little... makes some sense, I think. So. Yeah. <laughs> Now he's actually going for the imported cannon, so I guess we, he will start trading a Falconet pretty soon. But he's getting housed now, so he's not going to no, be able to start trading it immediately, and it's going to be really awkward. And I don't think he's going to be able to get more houses up in time. Yeah, the Skriot just got wiped as well. Yeah. Oh, he's raiding in the meantime, though. Wait, no, wait, what? Did, wait, what's this? Oh, it's just trees? My bad. It's, the, it's my colors. <laughs> <laughs> Me messing up that. Uh, yeah. Is that possibility? Getting a uh, new barracks. Yeah, this is such an awkward exchange. The longbow are actually cheaper too. Yeah, we see him stacking actually so much food there. The Three are not upgraded. Yeah, mm. I think at this point you just sell food, right? Sell food, maybe buy wood. Yeah, yeah but he can't. I can't, can't do it anymore. Houses. Yeah. Oh down. yeah, and he's he's going in now with the cavalry, but yeah, I think it's just. This point, there's so many longbows that the longbows themselves can just kill all the cavalry, and that's exactly what we see. The pikeman doesn't even. Oh, and all these are coming in. That's yeah. Just... There's so many sars there. Yeah. But very... he's backing up with their sars, but yeah, I think this is a very good good play from uh, from from Pete, like just picking the right units and uh, yeah, yeah, very good. And also killing the houses is just huge here. Yeah, I, I don't like the decision by. Uh, uh, Iwo upgrading the calf instead of upgrading the, the archers either. It's not, not, not yeah. very nice. Although, this is a nice spot. Yeah, but I, I, I just think it's too little too late. Yeah. It does decent damage. Too, so. But yeah. Yeah, I guess it was okay. These calf though. Now the problem yeah. is, yeah, he doesn't really have any anti calf either. So, yeah, that's pretty rough. And that was Good a game. relatively short one, but. Um, well played by both players. I think the, the very yeah. creative idea here from uh, from Eo and, and there's just the, the right counter pick from Ritz with the unit. So that was that. Yeah, exactly. It was really interesting seeing that start there with the buff dock. I haven't really seen that. So props to Ivo Ivo for trying something new. But yep. like as you said, I think Pistol Pete just boomed a lot better and he did what Brits do best, and that is just spamming out villagers, going 700 wood, 600 wood, and then also building a few boats there, I think. Or maybe he never went for a dock. He actually yeah. didn't. I good. guess he didn't, yeah. Uh, I'll look at these. But yeah, that... Yeah. Maybe we should take a look at the post game. Let's oh, yeah. see the resource graph and, and see who came out on top. But I think it's going to be... It's so close, actually. Actually, quite close, yeah. Hmm. I, I guess he would even manage to get a lot of boats out to kind of offset that, but it kind of feels like he started with the dock and then he just didn't train boats for a while and then he kind of got back into it, so it was kind of half-heartedly going into that boom. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I feel like the boom was pretty alright, but it was mostly just the, the military was the problem. Like, just, just not knowing how to deal with this bike, very strong bike bow uh, formation, which is, I, I suppose that's just 
it is hard to counter. Like, you, you, you kind of need to go. I suppose, like, an Akan FF would actually beat it. But, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's tough one. Yeah. And you yeah, don't have I, the XP I, I, on this map. Akan is, is really good versus yeah. that composition. You, you don't really have the XP on this map. I suppose you could. Actually, yeah. you could use XP on the university. I would probably say. Yeah. Also, like, uh, against Brits, uh, just going straight for a, a fast industrial is actually really good as Hausa. In this position, you can mm -hmm. just go industrial and then you can just send H up with the Yoruba Lancers and they will just wreck everything because, well. They're, they're already H4 stats, you can get H4 Falconets, and it's really good versus Brits. Yeah, but it, it was a good boom, let's let's be honest. Like, uh, if, if you, like, keeping up with Brits this well is, is actually yeah. impressive. C can I see the villager graph again? Yeah. Yeah, that's actually interesting. So he is basically keeping up. He is a few wheels be behind for yeah, them. Considering their scouts, economics, and the, and the university, I suppose... It's, it's pretty cool. Yeah, that, that's really interesting. And and I think it's really interesting as well because Brits went like quite greedy going for 700 wood and 600 wood and he really uh, plopped down a lot of houses there. So I think this strategy probably has uh, a lot of potential against a sieve that just doesn't boom as good as Brits. Yeah, yeah. Imagine using this against uh, uh, like some, some native sieve maybe and trying to like holding the pressure and just win by Eco. Yeah. Yeah, that would probably be pretty good. good. Yeah, some uh, kind of saying fast industrial with one type of native on the map feels kind of rough. Yeah, you got a point, I think. Yeah, but I don't know. I think Hausa's fast industrial, uh, like the native treatise card, I, I think is is not really the strongest point in, in the fast industrial because like Maybe. the 1600 influence means you can train, you can train good you this from the palace and you can also uh, mainly get the falconets yes 1600 influence that's like three and some uh, and some extra resources uh falconets and yeah it's just really strong together with uh, with account of course if you send those as well yeah okay let's wrap up i think and uh maybe maybe you can share your final thoughts on this map mm. yeah uh so yeah that was a pretty interesting game we saw some it's two very interesting takes on booming as Hausa and Brits, and at the end, Pistol Pete coming in clutch there with the with the uh, Pike uh, units together with the longbows and showing how strong Brits still are. So thank you guys for watching, and that was this game. On to the next one, I guess. Yeah, see you next time.